Okay. So let's move on to our next story. And once again, this is having to do with Disney. But this is a, a different twist, if you will. So the CEO, of course, as I was just speaking about, um, is basically he's going to be starting to cut costs back for these projects. All of the film, television, and everything else, he's going to start cutting costs. Um, so he, quality, not volume. And this is what I've been saying for a long, long time. They should have been cutting costs for a while. Because here's the thing. I would rather, and I've said it before, I would rather see ten, five really, 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 really good projects than 10 mediocre projects. And so what he says here is that the company, uh, Disney CEO, so this comes from The Hollywood Reporter. Disney CEO Bob Iger said Thursday that his company is closely examining all aspects of his content business across film and television as it plots the best path forward in a tricky media environment that includes a linear television business in decline, a theatrical business with an uncertain future, and a streaming business that is growing but requires a, a path to profitability. Speaking at the same conference, which I was just referring to, uh, Morgan Stanley, Iger said the company will be specifically looking at how much it's spending on content and how many projects it's producing moving forward. Quote, I'm really pleased that the support I'm getting uh, I'm getting from the content creators of the company is significant and real, and it comes in the form of reducing the, the expense per content, whether it's a television series or a film, where costs have just been skyrocketed in a huge way and not supportable in way, in my opinion. They all agree to that, end quote. Uh, adding that it was about, quote, understanding how much volume we need, reducing how much we make, and how much we make. So it's how much we spend on what we make and how much we make. So it's it's kind of a catch-22, but you can understand that what he's saying. However, Iger left, the, uh, left open the potential for making projects that the company could sell elsewhere. And as we look to reduce the, con the content we're creating for our own platforms, there probably are opportunities to license third parties, he said. For a while, that was verbatim or something we couldn't possibly do because we were so f we were favoring our own streaming platforms. But if we get to a point where we need less content for these platforms, we still have the capability of producing that content. Why not use it to grow revenue? And that's what we would likely do, end quote. So any third-party stuff, he would just sell off to like a Netflix or an Amazon or Hulu or whatever it is. I think they own Hulu actually, but you get the idea. He added that the core franchise content, Marvel, Star Wars, Frozen, would remain exclusive to Disney-owned platforms. Disney is very strong. The most powerful brand certainly in family entertainment, he said. Adding that when customers see the live-action Little Mermaid in May, it will, quote, remind you just how strong the, the brand is, end quote. But he also had frank and interesting comments about Marvel and Star Wars, suggesting that the company is carefully thinking about its approach to those brands moving forward. What we have to do, quote, this is what he said, what we have to do is look at Marvel, as at Marvel is not necessarily the volume of Marvel storytelling, but how many times we go back to the well on certain characters, end quote. Sequels typically work well for us, but do you need a third or fourth, for instance? Or is it time to turn to another character? There's nothing in any way inherently off in terms of this, of the Marvel brand. I think that we just have to take a look at what characters and what stories we're mining, end quote. And if you look at the trajectory of Mar Marvel over the next five years, you'll see a lot of newness, he said. Now that we're going back to the Avengers franchise, but with a whole new set of Avengers as an example. Star Wars, we may... Star Wars, we made three what we call saga films, which is obviously the successor to George Lucas's first six. They did very well at the box office, tremendously well, as a matter of fact. We made two so-called so standalones in Rogue One and Solo. Rogue One did quite well. Solo was a little disappointing to us. It gave us pause just to think maybe the cadence was a little too aggressive. 
and so we decided to pull back a little. We are still developing Star Wars films. We're going to make sure that when we make one, that it's the right one. So we are being very careful there. At a high level, Iger said that the goal is to focus on high-quality programming, calling out not only the core franchise, but F, but also as but also FX, which he praised as a producer of content and brand. You know, there isn't so much com, uh, consumer choice. There's so much com, consumer choice right now that it comes to what is differentiated. And he said, there's only one th- obvious thing we've talked about. Is it those brands of Star Wars, Marvel, Disney, and Pixar, for example. But quality is a differentiator. Uh, so he goes on. I'm not going to read the whole thing for you guys. Um, Basically, what he's saying is that quality over quantity. I have always said this. I have been saying this for years. I I think that this is what they need. I think this is what they should do. And frankly, if this is true, this is big. Not only is it going to put more money back in their wallet, but we're not going to be getting three and four and five films of a certain character um don't get me wrong some of them were great films i love thor ragnarok you know is that buddy you know comedic thing was it necessary though Eh, maybe okay um and so i think what he's doing is just cutting the cost all these stories you know we just did a stream with um, talking the Mandalorian spoiler cast. By the way, if you want to check that out, go check out the Mandalorian spo- spoiler cast I just did with Sam earlier today. Um, talking about Star Wars projects. And I asked him, are, because he's a huge Star Wars guy, I said, are you fatigued? And he said, not really. you know. But the thing is that you've had so many Star Wars projects come out in the last five years. I mean, whether you have Mandalorian, You've got the Book of Boba Fett. You've got Andor. You've got, I know I'm missing one. You've got all these projects. You take a look at all these Marvel projects, okay, over the past three or four years, you know, whether it's the Marvel or uh, Miss Marvel, She Hulk, Moon Knight, you know, you're going to have all these projects. You don't need them. You don't need, even if you want to put it, there is so much content on Disney Plus now. You don't need to make more. Let people enjoy what's there. So I would just say this. I like the fact that he's doing what he's doing and saying we're going to cut costs. And when we make a Star Wars movie, it's going to be the right Star Wars movie. Um, I, I like this because that tells me he's got his head screwed on straight. Um, he, he's not trying to make a whole bunch of money. That's going to take care of itself on its own. It's what kind of st- I've always, always, always impressed. Okay, that it's about the story. You can have the greatest characters in the world, but if the story is crap, okay, um, that's it. People are going to check out. But you can have the worst actors in the world and the greatest stories, and they can act the hell out of it, and it would be okay. it would be decent. So I think that this is the right move for Disney, and this is the right move to do that. Now, obviously, as he said, they're not going to touch the IPs of Marvel and Star Wars and Frozen and everything else. But you're not going to see a lot of um, you're not going to see a lot of unnecessary content, right? And I think this is going to be a big thing. And um, I like it. I like it. So, and if they can bring us better Marvel projects, I'm not saying, you know, all the other ones are bad. If they can bring us better Marvel projects than they have been for the past couple of years, fantastic. I love it. What do you guys think? Is this the right move that Iger is making? Do you think he should continue to go down the road do you, he is, or do you think they should be cutting costs? How many projects... Would you like to see him cut it by? Could you maybe give me a number of how many projects per year? Um, Leave your thoughts down in the comments, and I will get back to every single one of you.